That's as good as it's going to get. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow. The Adventures of Liz and Rebecca. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I was just saying, it feels like... Okay, sorry. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art Fiber. <laughs> In a sunny and bright, after a lot of rain, Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz. I'm the minion there. It's going to be like 70 today. Okay. Yeah, it is. It, that's why I wore. That's why I wore my short sleeve dress today. I was just saying, it feels like it's been a really long time since we've done this, and because we filmed a day early last week, it feels like forever. I don't know. Um, so I don't have my name tag on, but that's okay because I'm gonna show this off later. Um, so we're only filming one day a week now, and we're kind of mishmashing almost everything in together on on that day. So, um, just to remind people that Tuesday right now is our virtual sit and stitch day. I'm just getting this out of the way this at the one, beginning. This um, from only seven to eight right now, things may or may not change right now. It's kind of nice to back off and see how things go because we did too much before. So, but, um, I, so I wanted to get that in the, the next Sunday sit and stitch is March 17th. It's March 17th. That's not this Sunday. It's a week from Sunday. So we still have like a week and a half-ish before that. Okay, so I got the busy stuff out of the way. Or the, the nuts and bolts, I wanted to say. The, the technical stuff. Um, but I want to... I, I'm looking... So, there's, a, there's, there's lots of stories behind this. But yeah, yes. you finished this like... What time this morning? This morning. Um... It was eight. So I got everything done except <laughs> for the what? everything done except for the straps last night because okay. the fabric and I were having issues. Did you try um, to get a specific part for the straps? Yes. It looks nice. Yes. Okay. So tell us about your dress, Liz. So let me back up. Husband has a traumatic brain injury. March is Wait, 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 wait. I didn't hear the first word of this. Oh, I know my... what it is. <laughs> But I'm going to ask you to say it my, again. My husband has a traumatic brain injury. Uh, TBI. TBI Appreciation Month or... Awareness. Awareness Month. Appreciation. It, it's, isn't it great? Yeah. Is um, March. So I was like, this March I'm going all in. So the color for TBI Awareness is green. So I put my green hair back in. Mm -hmm. and I feel like there's a green tone to your dress too. Yeah, and I trimmed it in green serger thread. Oh, oh, you, you, you helped people I like helped towards people. Yeah. that direction. I like it. I right. wanted a brains dress and not one that was like neon green with little squeal lines all over it. So I went on Etsy and I found um, somebody took a, a slice of an MRI and put it on fabric. And that's what and then this is. And you got it off of Spoonflower. Yep, though, I right? got it off of Spoonflower. So I'm going to see if I can get the light. That's, that's so, so cool. It looks, it looks very so kaleidoscopy. Cool. Yeah. Um, with the brains. It's so, really cool. I, I love it. <laughs> and, um, so Wait, anyway. Stay up for a second. Can you, oh. can you, can can you spin for us? I'm going to oh, move. Can I twirl? That's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not twirl fast. No, I didn't mean fast. I mean, oh, like, twirl like, slow. like do a 360, whatever. Thank you. It's You're so welcome. cool looking. I love so, it. Anyway, I, I finally have a brains dress. So, um, that cord on the floor. Yeah. Um, yeah. she's got a brains dress. I got a That's brains really dress. Cool. So, I made a brains hat once. Yeah. I, I it was weird. That, but, you know, I, well, I made the one I made, it was for a science thing and, is like you make the basic hat and then you make like basically I cords yeah. you, of different and lengths and you squiggle them, them yeah. and sew them on and stuff. This looks mock cool. It, mock cool. Yeah. I, I, it, it doesn't look like Halloween fabric. Like, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean there's times when you want Halloween fabric. Yeah. But I can like wear that. this all the time and have braids. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, um, so that's what, okay. So the past two days, like that's what you've been doing. This is what I've been working on. Yes. And over the weekend you did the hair. Uh, yeah. And is there, is there anything else you'd like to report to us? Um, on? I don't think I've shown these off in a while. No, I don't think you so have. So I will 
I got to be careful because I keep losing stitches. We, um, we we have things for that, you know. I know. Which I don't use either. And Stitch I stoppers. own them. And we have cute ones, and I still need to get them yeah. online because I need to take pictures. So <clears throat> I've kind of, I'm... We own them and we don't use them. Into my stars on my sweater. So this one is the water. Um, Will Addicts water. It's a crimped alpaca. You uh, may or may not still fuzzy. have it online. I, I think we do. But. It's it's the one that when I had to frog back mm -hmm. to on camera to 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 get some. It looks so pretty on camera. So anyway, yeah. it's it's all fuzzy and just. But you can still see the pattern even yeah. though it's fuzzy. Yeah. So, like fuzzy yarns, this is a good example of how fuzzy yarns can be used for color work. Um, just know that, you know, it might look better from further away, and it might not be as crisp a definition of color work, but it still looks It, cool. it just looks soft and, and So you're using yummy. the same pattern... For two different sweaters. For two different sweaters. You've reversed the lights and darks in yes. them. But it's an example of how you can see, like, how it, it shows up differently with different yarns. And this one I am doing in Saxony... Um, and I've reversed it so the the stars will be blue. Um, mm -hmm. And it's got a crisper definition to it. I'm it's also, not fuzzy. I'm it's also really soft, steaking though. this one. Um, so um, to be clear, is this an easily found and followed pattern um, online? I think I've mentioned it before. It is online. Um, I there are some issues with it. First off, it's only written for one size, a roomy medium large. Um, second off, it's a bottom up pattern that I am just turning upside yes. down. Do we have the name of the pattern? Do um, you remember the name? It's the Norwegian girl sweater, I think. Norwegian girl sweater. Okay. Yes. I may or may not be able to put the link up for that, but again, go into it knowing Liz is doing it differently. I am doing it. That's that's what I wanted to be clear I'm about. I'm doing it on different needle sizes because it's only written for a medium large. Um, and neither of us are a medium large. Yeah. The chart is that, and the black squares are what you do in the white, and the white squares are what you do in your dark colors. So... It's a fun one. <laughs> it makes um, the brain go. Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would say if you are not faint of heart and color work, you know, it might be fun to try. But if ah, okay, if, I was like, where are, is the sentence going? If you are faint of heart, I would not. If you're hesitant at yeah. all about like tackling a color work chart, it like doing this one, which the the is the negative of the pattern. Um, but the positive, it's the same way that the picture looks. Yes. But it's flipping the colors in the pattern. Yeah. In the chart. In the chart. Um, it's breaking my brain. <laughs> so. I, I often tell people, I'm like, if you know how to knit and purl, you can make anything in the shop, including these. It just might take more time. Like some things, it's like that's the whole faint of heart thing. If it's not for the faint of heart is the phrase. Um it just might take more time and yeah. you might want to swear at it a little bit more. I, I don't work <laughs> on it when we have like group sit and stitch. There's times. so many things I, I don't because, work on because it yeah. like when people are around because I'm going to mess it up. There's more things than usual lately. So <laughs> yeah, I love the complication of it, but um, if there's people I can't mm -hmm. because breaking brains. So yeah. Cool. So that's me. Those are awesome. Um, so so I should, um, we finished Finisher Frog at February, which Liz was not participating in. Nope. I did uh, not finish anything. We finished anything. that last week. I did not frog anything. In yeah. fact, I started things. So <laughs> I started things behind the scenes, so I have some stuff to maybe show off now that it's no Joy longer February. <laughs> well, it's not February anymore, so. No. You know. Um. But this, I blocked this over the weekend. This was, um, I think I held it up last week. This is my Dodge shawl. And doesn't it look pretty? I'm about to show you how, how pretty it looks. Like, it got so much bigger. So this was made with, this is my leftovers. That's and a lot of leftovers. It's a lot of leftovers. It needed more than one skein, but I have a lot of leftovers for my second skein of the Plymouth Yakima. It's so soft. 
And this is still soft, but not as squishy springy. Like sometimes when you block things, some of the springiness is gone, but lace weight, um, lace weight, lace work words. I'm back to normal level maybe of messing up my words. Yeah. I'm just slightly, yeah. I mess up words before COVID. So, <laughs> but um, go back and watch last week's video. I think I showed it there and mm -hmm. you could see that it was like, I could be like, hello. It was pretty. It was pretty. But it didn't sing. But, but you couldn't really, and the, the back side of it looked like the, um, oh, this is where I had to tack down that extra yarn. Anyway, um, the back side of it looked like the, um, the, the I am dragon shawl or cowl. But see, look, uh -huh. like, sorry about the noise from my chair. Look at, look at what. That is gorgeous. It's big now. Like, I, I had to use a lot of blocking, more blocking pads than I thought for this. Um, and I want to show you how the lace settled and opened up. It really is, um, it, you almost can't even see it well when I hold it up that close because you're seeing through it. It sings, like it, absolutely sings. That, when we say that, you know, blocking something makes it sing, it, it opens up and helps things lay flat. And helps you see all the work you put into it. So this is actually quite big. Like if I wanted to wear it as... You could wear it as a formal little, I could wear it as a know. little like, like, hello. Um, in fact, I could wear it like this. I could put a pin and wear it like, like up front. I like to wear them like scarves kind of. But look, I mean, that fits. I never would have guessed it would fit around my shoulders and, and basically go to my elbows before I blocked it. Yeah. Um, and not everything. I feel like I'm wearing one of your boob dresses, Liz. <laughs> this is a new dress to me. Sorry. Um, drawing attention to the girls. Uh, so not everything is going to block the same way, though. So if I had made this in a different sport weight yarn, it may not have blocked out as big. Yeah. Like this is a single ply. It's so soft, though. I'm loving it. And it's in between temperature right now, so I figured it would be nice to wear with... Um, I, would, I could wear my, one of the penannular sh uh, shawl pins we have and keep it just like this to hide my girls <laughs> if I wanted to. Um, yeah, so blocking. Like, here's another example of I have not yet blocked this, so I'm going to, as warm, as comfy as that is, I'm going to keep worrying about my girls. So I'm going to put this back on. This is the other way. I put the point in the center and I wrap the edges around, and this just gives you, there's different ways to wear shawls. It's lovely. Um, so It looks more like a triangle cowl. And yeah, yeah. kind of like with extra material, yeah. right? And this one is really wide and not as deep as some um, symmetrical triangular shawls, because this one, like there are some symmetrical shawls where you increase in the center spine and the edges on the right side, and then you don't do anything on the wrong side, on the back side, and you're going back across. This one, you also increased on the wrong side on just the edges. So that's what makes it really wide and not necessarily just as deep as it is wide. It's really wide and only so deep, the one I'm wearing. So um, this guy, so I was so close. I was so close to finishing this. This, this I finished, what, two days ago, yeah. I think? So I finished it in March. I did not finish it in February, but I got really close using Finisher Frog at February, so it almost counts. But I finally finished my Room of the View shawl. Uh -huh. So here's another one I'm gonna stand up and show. And, and this is another example of, I wanna show it this week because hopefully I can block it. See how it kind of puckers a little here? Cause we have um, just garter rows and then we have garter mosaic. And this all might straighten and even out when I block it. So, um, but this I used, and I think I left the yarn here so I could show you how little I had left. This, um, the Room of the View shawl, so the Dodge shawl, Wolf and Fawn Knits, in case I don't have a chance to put all of the links in for everything we talk about. Um, this is Room with a View by Lisa Hahn. And I did the same number of rows down here. I used one tonal yarn from Fiber Spates, Heavenly, and one slowly color changing yarn from Queensland called Perth. And I think it was Tasmanian Bay. Yeah. 
It might have been one of the others, but um, it's an old die lot of it. I'm going to dig through here to see if I can find the leftovers. And then I did the same number of repeats of this garter mosaic, which I think is just absolutely lovely. Kind of like window panes. I did four and a half repeats of the chart like she did. And then at the end, she did 16 more garter ridges up here. And the garter ridges are kind of what kill me because they're not as fun. Especially and when they're that long. Well, yeah, because because this is this started at the bottom here, just a few stitches, and each row gets longer. It took me so long to get to this point because I was getting bored, but I love the fit the this part. You know, um, you can. It's a little bit of a choose your own adventure. Like, she might tell you you need to get to this multiple of stitches to start. So you could I could have done more of the garter mosaic up here and mosaic means I went across with one color and then went across with the other and slipping stitches in the order she tells you to gives gives it this pattern instead of tackling two colors at a time which is what a lot of my co like stranded color work is mm -hmm. um I I went till I had 10 garter ridges up here and I said that's got a nice border, and I feel like I'm starting to play yarn chicken because everybody's um, skeins are different lengths, and we all have different gauges. So I found um, the fiber spates has less yardage than a classic fingering weight, sock weight um, skein has. It only has 399 yards. So this is how much I had left. I could have done another garter ridge, but I decided I was kind of done. <laughs> And I bound off with the other one that I had. So I did, I went over and back and then did the bind off with what was left of my purse. So I think I did pretty well. I could have eked out like another couple of rows with each of these, but I decided I was okay with where I was. So I'm done. <laughs> but I'm really excited because this one has been on the needles for a really long time. I'm really excited it's done. And I will try to block it this weekend so I can show you all next week how it compares. So, um, so that I would, it's, here's my dilemma. Now that I've done finished, now that February is finished words. Um, so I frogged what six things I think. And I finished eight. If we count this, I finished nine right after. Um, I still have, because I like, it's like I started with 40 and that, the no this no it was okay math i know i got to 15 things and this makes 16 by the end of finishing or frogging um if we count like just into march but i still have almost 30 projects still on needles both because i found some more than my original count of 40 and i started some more though those i didn't count in my original 40 So now I have this dilemma. I mean, it's not really a huge dilemma. It's like, do I want to keep working on finishing old projects? Or do, like, there's so many new ones I want to start. And I'm going to show you all a couple before we end today. Um, part of me kind of wants to, the new things, like, to not let them languish. To get the new things wrapped up and work on the old things around the edges. And there's another part of me that wants to focus on the older things. But then I have more languishing projects, I feel like, because the new ones start to languish. I don't know. The struggle is real. You know. So. <laughs> but let me catch you up on, um, like, I brought, <laughs> here's an example. I brought home my, these are all going to get tangled together. Um, I brought home my flax that, I've been meaning to finish for a while, thinking I would do it during knit night, and I didn't. Um, I, I worked on other things during knit night because I just... I might have been kitty locked, but I might not have. This is one that I really would like. I'd like to get my older things finished as samples for the shop, but then the newer things... Are samples for the shop that need to get finished, too. It's it, all... I was a, okay, so did I show this last week? I can't remember. I might have. The, the, no. No, that, okay. No. Okay, so new color of feeder book. It's so pretty. It's called Fusion. It's really bright. It's really like bazinga. And I picked, th this happened during February. I just kept it on the DL. <laughs> um, I picked this color to go with it because I'm like, oh, like mosaic or It'll stripes like or something. Bam. I know. And, but I'm not doing color work 
or mosaic with this. I'm doing a shawl that's going to have, it's got a lot of garter in it. It's a Dioquif. Um, I want to say it's called Sonatine. And it's got a lot of garter where you can see these colors change. And then it's got a lace stripe in it that I'm going to do in this color. So I had, I, I originally picked these out thinking, wouldn't this be an amazing to do something like this with it? And then I changed my mind based on what I was finding online. So I will keep you all updated. Um, it's one of those cowls you make flat and then sew up. And this is all I have done. There's not much to show. But I will keep you all posted. It's exciting and new enough that I might actually make progress on it. Maybe. <laughs> um, I, have, I have a couple other things to show off before we go today. New yarn. We got a new cot. We're going to start getting lots and lots of cottons in. And we're still debating trying to get Wednesday going again where we only sh we only talk about yarn. We might. We're st I'm just trying not to We We have some ideas. They're still in the works. We're, we're brainstorming. Yeah. Um, but Cascade, I like, I'm trying not to bring in too many new yarns, but I think I failed miserably. Anyway, um... But Cascade, I'm paying off a lot of a big order from Cascade, but they said, hey, look, we have this new sport weight cotton, 100% cotton, called Botanica. I want to call it Botanica, too. But um, <laughs> I'm going to call it all different things. But it's thinner than, like, this is, I haven't knit much with it yet, so it comes in these cute little balls. And it's thinner than a lot of the cotton we have with that same, like, twisted feel. So I was just like, I'm going to have to make a sample. And I've picked the Summer Noose, S-O-M-M-E-R-K-N-U-S. I spent, I spelt it really wrong online and only fixed it where it would let me fix it this morning. Um, it has this texture in the yoke, like not, not lace work, but just textures of knits and pearls. I thought it'd be really nice in this crisp definition cotton yarn to get gauge, like the Summer Noose, their sweater, they used a lace, like, no, a fingering weight and a mohair or something. But they were still calling it sport weight. And this is sport weight. So I call fingering with a fingering cotton with a mohair. They, they were calling that sport weight. A fingering wool with a mohair I call DK. But to get gauge on this, I had to go up to a 9 like a 5.5 millimeter, which is a lot bigger than the ball band is going to say to use for this. This is marigold speckle, by the way. Would you like me to um, go get the other colors so we can show them? Um, I don't know if we have time for that. That's the thing. Maybe maybe we'll do a, a quickie next week to try to show you all. You um, did post pictures of it. I posted at the end of, of, I did morning meditation with this this morning. And at the end of my accompanying photos, I put photo in my newsletter and the end of my accompanying photos for my morning meditation on Instagram, which copies to Facebook, I put pictures of the colors and I might steal from Cascade. They won't be our pictures, but I'll, I'll show you Cascade's pictures, which are kind of accurate, you know, somewhat, if I'm able to put this online. But like this recommends a three to a five needle. This is actually a really good example of how you don't have to go by what's on the label. If you want to make a top that fits, hopefully, even though the stitch definition is loose, hopefully this will fit and be light and breezy. Anyway, so um, I stayed up last night long enough to get through the short rows. I stayed up later than I should have because the short rows, so this was really interesting because it was like, okay, on your smaller needle, do two rows of pearls for the neck. And then go right into short rows with your bigger needle. So I was like juggling between needles because short rows mean you're not going across the whole row. And I wanted to get this to the part where I was on one needle for morning meditation because that's just too finicky. So I stayed up. And now I have like eight rows of knitting before it gets to the fun texture part. So, mm. but the last thing I wanted to show you all today, um, I had a side adventure in February, and I almost finished, but I, I couldn't. I couldn't do the last part of it last night. I was just too tired. Um, I had a side adventure in February where I started to um, make a pink elephant. I was and like, what side adventure? Like, what I are you talking that. about? Yeah, you, yeah. I was there. But she was there, but she. I didn't tell her yet. Okay, what I was talking about. Um, 
I started making a pink elephant, and he's almost done. <laughs> he was just a head for a while, and then recently I was like, I want to finish him. This is um, Susan B. Anderson. I, w I, I was looking through a pattern book for to make a sample for the shop, and I saw an elephant, and it was like, oh. And I have a special place in my heart for pink elephants. You'll have to talk to me and ask me the story. And um, the pattern book that I was like, we'll make a sample for the shop. It was all knit flat and sewed up and it looked like it was gonna be terribly complicated. So I decided to keep the pink yarn. This is, this is one of um, Cascade's new, or at least new to us, um, hand paint 220 super wash. And I haven't gotten these online either, but um, I will see what I can do. Again, I might have to borrow pictures from Cascade. But Susan B. Anderson has wonderful knitted patterns for animals online. And a lot are just figures and things online and on Ravelry. And so, and I'm like, look at the little foot. It's so cute. He only has one foot right now, one leg. He's almost done. She has clothes and everything. Yeah, for... like he could have an outfit, but I like showing off the pink. So, so I am technically making a shop sample to show off how the hand paint knits up. Um, of course, it's going to knit up differently depending on, like, so see how, like, he has whiter patches and not so whiter patches. And this was done contiguously, like, all the same time. And yet this spot doesn't have a whole lot of the white. And then this stuff down here, the body was all done at the same time. He has more white. It's, it's really like, it's every skein is individual. Every skein is individual, but the, it's not like it's irregular, which is kind of like a hand dye, but it's more mass produced. Um, and I just thought, you know, he's got pink in him. So he works for my pink elephant. So I've been working on him. What I like about Susan B. Anderson's patterns is like, it started with the head and, she helps by doing like pearl like segments so you know where like the ears are going to go and you know where the hands and the feet are going to go. Like here is, here's my pearl section right in here. Here's where the other leg is going to go. And I have a stitch marker from way back when I was working on the body for where the tail is going to go. So there's very little sewing. Like I have a lot of ends I still need to put in and she wants you to do that as you go and I haven't. But, um, really well done patterns really really like them and and honestly i think this is the first one i've done we have knitters who've done tons shout oh, yeah. out to kathleen and deb um and and they they're like these are great and i finally have jumped on board so um here's my little guy i think when his other leg is done he might actually sit up straight and when his tail is done, that might help him sit up straight because I didn't weigh the bottom of his fiber fill. Anyway, I wanted to show you all. He will probably be done next week, and I'll try to remember to show him off for you all. But isn't he cute? He's so cute. I haven't named him yet. I don't, it's not, I guess it's a him. The pattern is Winnie the Elephant. So the pattern is, has a female name, but I'm, I keep calling him him. So, and I think he kind of looks like, like the elephants from Babar. From my childhood so I might look through the babar names I don't think he's a babar but I might look through the names to pick a name for this guy so anyway he's been traveling to and from the shop with me so he won't be left alone at the shop even if I don't work on well him. eventually he'll he just he'll, want to he'll go <laughs> over on the table with all the other dragon friends and squirrel yeah friends and he might he might take side trips and stuff we'll see but yeah we have the front table has like a lot of our figurines and our and the dragon and the squirrels and the princess bride characters and the gnomes gnomes and the the Viking gnomes and the stuff like that anyway so um I need to go to the bank and we need to open up the shop. So I think we're going to stop for now. But yes, I'm back to having a million new projects going. And I also want to finish older projects. So I will try. We'll see what happens. I feel like my energy is a lot better than it was like a month ago. Mm -hmm. But we're about to head into like the brioche classes. Speaking of that, the online brioche class. Look, look, I'm not going to touch him. He's sitting for right now. The online brioche classes are up. Um, so you can see the schedule and sign up for the Zoom sessions of the Brioche if you want to attend the Brioche classes, which are, they are more uh, like skill building than based on a, a project specifically. They're more about building your skills in Brioche so you can use them on a project. 
Um, if you want to do in person, those are filling up fast. So contact the shop. There's a form you can fill out on the online calendar at sundragonartandfiber.com for the in person. And that form does not guarantee you no, a spot. No, it, it lets me know to coordinate with you, but I'm trying to reach out and coordinate in the order they come in. If you want to do the virtual classes, um, those start March 24th on Sundays, every other Sunday for four classes. And you can purchase those in the online shop because that's unlimited. That we can have a whole gaggle of y'all just watching. And But in person, I like to limit it to four, maybe five people. So anyway, I think once he has all his things, he's going to sit. He's going to be perfect. He's sitting right now. I'm just trying not to breathe too hard on him. So, and when I go to like do this, I'm probably yeah. going to knock him over. So anyway, um, I think that's all. We hit, we hit um, 1860 oh, cool. for subscribers. So like I said, when we hit 2000, we won't have a mega, mega sale, but we will have a YouTube only sale when we hit 2,000 subscribers. So um, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. And um, I talked about Zoom, but we didn't talk about how to join Zoom. So both on Tuesday from 7 to 8, and then on the any Tuesday, usually, and then on the 17th from 2 to 4, all U.S. times, you get into Zoom with the shop phone number. 828-877-3550. I'm like, there's stuff Liz likes, like either, you may not like to say, but you say. And we got to get to it all. So um, what else about subscribers? Oh, like, subscribe, ring the bell. All the fun stuff. I'm like, those are the things My people expect you to say. Yeah, we're still, we're still recovering. We're feeling a lot better, but we're still getting back to it. So... And once these online classes start, I could go mush again. We'll find out. So yeah, it's and it's all <laughs> leading up to the yarn crawl. Oh my gosh! Yes, yeah. the um, for people who either want to travel here for it or are local enough to attend in some way, the yarn crawl, the Western North Carolina yarn crawl this year, is the seventh through the twelfth of May. It's the week leading up to and including Mother's Day this year. We, we're, we're keeping it on Sunday and not all the shops. We don't know if we're going to be open on Sunday. We might not be. Um, but the theme this year, there's 12 shops across Western North Carolina who are participating and it is the year of the dragon. So the theme this year is, um, is, is like cultivate your dragon horde of yarn, that kind of thing. So, um, I'm trying to get a new pin together. We're trying to get like little drag. It's, it's an in-person event. It's hard for us to have that happen online as well. We might have some celebratory things afterwards for online people, but mark your calendars. If you're able to come, um, other places, there'll be like a scavenger hunt amongst the 12 shops to try to find things to, to earn like a badge. You're not earning like a mega prize or anything. You're earning some street cred of I found dragons or I found things at all of the shops. And we hope to update. I'm in charge of the website and I haven't updated that yet, but there, I hope to have more of a description on wncyarncrawl.com for that. Anyway, so it's going to be a crazy few months. But we're excited. And, and when we come out on the other side, you know, we'll see we'll how we're dead. doing. <laughs> we'll see how we're doing. <laughs> anyway. All right. We're going to go. Bye. Bye. We'll see you next week. Okay. Bye.